Welcome back to another redstone tutorial video. Today, we're talking about the skulk sensor. Now with the skulk sensor, things get really interesting as we start getting into things like wireless redstone, action detection, and a whole bunch of really fun things. Let's get into it. The skulk sensor cannot be crafted. Instead, you have to find it at the deep dark or when it generates when a mob dies near a skulk catalyst block. To get the skulk sensor, mine it with a silk touch tool. A hoe is the fastest. If there are vibrations made near the skulk sensor, it'll detect that and light up. This can be from placing or breaking blocks, equipping armor, throwing potions. It also gives out a redstone signal on all sides and strongly powers the block underneath it. And if we're using the fancy redstone resource pack I've been using for this series, which should be linked in the description. So if we activate it, we've got a signal strength of 11. But if I go over here, it's got a signal strength of 9 or a four. Now, the reason this is like this is because it changes depending on how far the signal has to travel. So if we're standing on top of the skulk sensor, it gives out a signal of 15, but it can also do more with redstone signals. If we hook a comparator up to our skulk sensor, then when we activate it, it'll give out a different signal. So if we're walking around, it'll give out a signal of only one. Though for placing a block, it'll give out a signal of 13. This is because each type of vibration has a different signal output. We get a signal strength of 1 by doing things like walking or swimming. We get a strength of 2 for landing on the ground, a projectile landing, level 3 for throwing projectiles or playing instruments, flying with elytra to give us level 4, equipping armor for level 5, mounting an entity for level 6, damaging an entity for level 7, Eating or drinking for level 8. Closing a container for level 9. Opening a container for level 10. A block changing, like interacting with a chiseled bookshelf or a composter for level 11. Destroying a block for level 12. Teleporting for level 14. And either entities dying or explosions for level 15. Now these are some of the basic ones, so I'll put a full list of all the different interactions in the description. And that's how the direct redstone outputs work, but there's so much more. In the intro, I mentioned that you could use the skulk sensors for wireless redstone. If we have a skulk sensor over here, and another skulk sensor over there, and we make a vibration, this one here lights up, but it doesn't send any signals to that one over there. That's because when a skulk sensor picks up a vibration, it doesn't send any itself. But what you can do is place something like a trapdoor or some other redstone activated item that does something when you give it a redstone signal, and when you move, it opens the trapdoor, which creates a vibration that can be picked up by that skulk sensor. If you take a block of amethyst and place it on or next to the skulk sensor, then every time there is a vibration, it will send that to neighboring skulk sensors within the 8 block range. And if these skulk sensors are next to or touching a amethyst block, then they will send signals to all the skulk sensors within their range. And it can even go multi-directional, so a signal can be sent both to there and there. Now we have a really easy way to transmit signals across long distances. When I interact with this trapdoor, the lights over there will turn on. There isn't a limit to how far the signal can travel or how many skulk blocks can carry that signal, as long as the skulk blocks are all in loaded chunks. Something you could even do is make a large circle like this, block off one of the sides so the signal can only go in one direction, and before the signal can come back the other way around, you remove the block and then you've got yourself kind of a really expensive but super cool looking redstone clock. And to do that, we'll need some wool. Now wool is a special block because it blocks the ability for the skulk sensor to hear signals. So here it sees the signal just fine, but if we're over here with the, the skulk sensor in between, we can make as much noise as we want, place blocks, break blocks, as long as we're behind the wool block, it won't be able to know that we're here. So now we've got this one blocked off with wool, so it'll only be able to loop around the one side. So if we launch that, then destroy this one, 
then we'll have our thing going in a full loop that won't ever stop. Now you'll notice that they are a little bit loud, which is not good if you want to use them for a secret hidden trap. And what you can do to fix that, here it is waterlogged and we can see it's detecting us, but it's not making noises. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't work if we have amethyst, as with amethyst, that makes its own noise as well. If you remember back, when the sensor detects an arrow hitting the ground, it gives off a signal strength of 2. What's neat is that it can carry, so if it's activated all the way over there, this skulk sensor here, the comparator, will give an output of 2. Now, heading on to the crafting table, putting a skulk sensor in the middle, and three amethyst shards around it, we got ourselves the calibrated skulk sensor. The calibrated skulk sensor is the exact same as all the other skulk sensors, except for a few things. Not counting the giant crystal that's now sticking out of it, the calibrated skulk sensor is much different from the ordinary skulk sensors. As in, it is much better. It has twice the detection range, so it can detect me all the way over here. It is faster, so it can detect a signal every second instead of every two seconds. The redstone works the same, except for the fact that the side with the crystal on it does not give out a redstone signal. This is where it receives its redstone signal. So we've got this thing here, where the comparator looks at how many pages are in the book, and then puts out the redstone signal we want. So if we set this to 2, then the calibrated skulk sensor can no longer detect if I'm walking. However, it can detect if I shoot an arrow nearby it. This is because by inputting the specific redstone signal, we can tell the calibrated skulk sensor to only listen for a certain sound, and it'll only put out a vibration when that certain sound is given. So if we put it on page 11, we can place or break all the blocks we want, but it'll only actually detect anything if we change the block, like hoeing it. It still retains the redstone signal, so if we till this block of dirt here, it'll output a signal of 11. Now with all this, you can probably see a whole bunch of various different things that you can make with Skulk sensors, including even more secret bases with different obscure ways to open them, fun traps, mob detection systems, and so much more. But that's all you need to know about the Skulk sensor in Minecraft. Make sure to check out the redstone playlist so you can learn all you need to know about the different redstone stuff. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss another amazing video. Subscribe!